Welcome to the Business Resilience Decoded podcast, brought to you by Asfalis Advisors and the Disaster Recovery Journal. Crisis management in today's world is ever-changing, and this podcast is our commitment to help you navigate successful outcomes for any crisis you may face. I'm your host, Vanessa Matthews. I specialize in providing insights and solutions for crisis, continuity, and resilience across industries from real estate and healthcare to terrorism in the airline and transportation worlds. No matter what industry you're in, this podcast will provide you the tools to build resilience in your organization. Welcome back to another episode. Uh, Today's session is going to be solo and we're going to be talking about what the train derailments in the United States can teach us about data, workers, and the risks of cutting costs. So as you're probably aware, there have been some major train derailments in the United States in 2023 and we're only four months into the year at the time of this podcast recording. On February 3rd, a train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, spilled thousands of gallons of toxic vinyl chloride into the town. While this has been one of the most disastrous derailments in recent years, NPR states that there are an average of three train derailments in the U.S. per day. In today's episode, we're going to unpack what's behind these derailments and what we can all take away from this, regardless of your industry. The information gathered from today's episode is from NPR, as well as the Wall Street Journal, and all of the articles will be found as links in our show notes. So for a bit of background, let's review the situation and the numbers behind the story. Since 2016, many major railroad companies started implementing precision scheduled railroading, PSR for short. And what that essentially means is it was their way of reducing the total number of miles traveled by increasing the amount of cargo that their equipment carried. And this was an effort to do a few things, to cut costs, to make the most use of their equipment, as well as it often uh, resulted in longer trains that were heavier than before. In the seven years since this practice began, five of those years showed an increase in train derailments. So there's three major factors that we can take away from this case study. One is data, two is human capital, and three is the risk of cutting costs. Physical threats such as severe weather, infrastructure failures, or civil unrest are forcing everyone to prepare for unpredictability. OnSolve is here to help leaders navigate this complexity within their organization. As the leading critical event management provider that mitigates physical threats, OnSolve helps organizations to remain agile when a crisis strikes. Using the most trusted expertise and reliable AI-powered risk intelligence, critical communications and incident management technology, the OnSolve platform enables enterprises, small to medium organizations, and all levels of government to detect, anticipate, and mitigate threats that impact their people, places, and property. For more information about OnSolve or to request a demo, please visit www.onsolve.com. So first, let's talk about the data. Railroads use temperature sensors and acoustic sensors to detect issues with train cars and to help prevent train derailments and other issues. In this case of East Palestine, the temperature sensors were too far apart. So when the issue was detected, it was too late. So of course, what gets measured gets managed, right? So technically, the sensors operated exactly as they were supposed to. They notified the conductor as soon as the temperature exceeded a certain amount. However, it did not send a notification that the temperature was increasing between sensors. So what I'm thinking about is there's a difference between a leading indicator and a lagging indicator. And by the time we obtain a piece of data, how effective is the data in the time that we're receiving it for us to be able to influence the decisions that we're making Um, as well as to protect the life and safety of the people that we are supporting in certain practices or roles. And so the, the big question, right, that I think we can all ask ourselves from a data perspective is what might be critical, what might be the missing critical data in our key processes or functions that maybe um, this, this case study can help us to think about a bit differently. So now let's talk a little bit about people. And I'll caveat this by saying a few months back, we covered the potential rail strikes on the podcast with Ken Baker. And so we'll also add this link to the episode um, that we recorded with Ken Ken Baker. 
So one of the claims from the Railroad uh, Workers Union was that railroads are understaffed and workers are overworked, right? Do more with less. Most major trains are around 10,000 feet long. And often two workers are responsible for the entire train. So there used to be more workers on trains, but teams were cut down to cut costs. So we've seen major layoffs over the last year. And there's been a lot of discussion about cutting costs by letting people go. So it begs me to question, right? When we talk about business continuity, it's typically about what do I do if I lose my key people, my suppliers, my technology, or my assets? In this scenario, we're asking about what happens if I lose my key people? So who is critical to your organization? And what's the risk of not having enough people in the right seats? Can we differentiate between the positions that are nice to have versus the positions that are mission critical where our health and safety depend on those? Last but not least, let's talk about core values and the risk of cutting certain costs. Core values, from my humble opinion, should be at the center of every decision that we make as we evaluate risks within our business. And if you're cutting costs at the expense of environmental health and safety or at the cost of workplace safety or at any cost, I think we all have to take a step back and ask ourselves, is that a cost that aligns the values of the organizations that we all uh, support and or our personal core values? So let's just say that regulations are lacking in a particular industry that you're in. How would your values guide your decisions in these areas? How can you lead your industry in a way that reflects positively on your brand? So for example, let's just say, what if there's no regulations around a cleanup standard or a chemical spill and how those things are supposed to happen? Does it mean because that there may or may not be a standard that we shouldn't have a level of excellence or quality in terms of how that cleanup process is performed, right? And so I think those are the ways that we have to kind of think about, even if there is no intervention from a government or a compliance or, or a regulatory perspective, in, in this case, because railroads are highly regulated, how do we then manage our businesses to adjust around that? So we hope that this episode was helpful in guiding you through some of the major key takeaways that you can think about following disasters. And we would love to hear your thoughts on today's episode over our YouTube channel or on LinkedIn. Until next time. Thank you for listening to the Business Resilience Decoded podcast brought to you by Asphalus Advisors and Disaster Recovery Journal. Make sure you check out the show notes for this episode to see all the upcoming events, programs, and ways we can support you. Make sure you subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcast, leave us a review, and share it with a friend. Thanks again, and I'll talk to you in the next episode.